we asked uh, if we have more than one sample. Uh, the tests we've seen so far have just been for one sample of, of preferences in this case. But what if we have more than one? And, and also within those different samples, might we not have more than two response categories possible? So for these, we're going to need two sample tests of proportions, or in general, an n sample test of proportion. Uh, and we can, uh, we can go through that here. When we uh, revisit our data, data file that had preferences for website A or B, but now we also add to that uh, the sex of the respondent, whether they were male or female. So let's go ahead and, and load prefs A, B, sex, uh, which will give us that information. And we'll see if there are differences in preferences by male or female. We can view that file as is good practice here. And we can see, again, uh, it's nice to have our subject column on the left, where we can make sure that you know, each subject is responding once. Uh, we have the preference, and that's the same as before. And then now we have their sex as well, male or female. Um, so we have two preference uh, categories and, and, of course, two sex categories there. Uh, as is good practice, we'll recode subject uh, uh, as a factor uh, rather than a numeric value, since it's just a number. R thinks it's just a, a numeric value. Um, incidentally, if you want to avoid that, you can give a letter in your subject identifiers. So you might want to do S1 through S60 rather than just 1 through 60, and then you don't need to worry about that. It's not an issue for these analyses. We're just doing it here for good practice. But uh, in future analyses, we will use subject directly in our, uh, in our formulas. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get a little summary as we've done. So we, we see there's, again, 14 preferences for A, 46 preferences for, for website design B, just like we had before. But now we know there are 31 females and 29 males in the response. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the graphs that show uh, those responses by, by sex. So the way we do that is we ask for a plot, and we ask for it over this data. Um, and we reach inside the table with these brackets, and we say we want the rows where the sex uh, column, uh, uh, the, the row value equals, in, in the first case, m for male. Uh, and then. Um, uh, and then we ask for the preferences of those rows. So that's what the notation's doing there. Remember, the dollar sign kind of reaches in to a field inside. And so um, uh, you'll notice also there's a comma and nothing after it here. Uh, it's a row uh, and then a column, uh, a row and then a comma and then a column. Uh, we want all rows. Uh, but if you needed to specify a specific cell in a table, that's how you would do that. You do need that comma, or it, it, uh, it won't work. So let's go ahead and look at the preference for males. And you can see the graph there. Um, uh, males seem to prefer website B more. Of course, we don't know if that's statistically significant. Um, let's check out for females. And we can see, oh, there was a pretty dramatic drop in their preference for website A there. Well, that would be certainly very interesting to find. Maybe there's something about it that uh, uh, doesn't make females happy about the design, or, or it's less usable for some reason. Of course, that would be pretty interesting to find. So uh, we can do, again, our Pearson chi-square test. Now it's a two-sample test of proportions. Uh, for that, we're going to use the xtabs function again to um, create a cross-tabs or cross-tabulation uh, table. And they're more interesting now because there are, two, there are two samples at work rather than just one. So let's go ahead and view that in the viewer. And we can see that uh, for preferences for A and B here on the left, and for each sex, we can see uh, you know, the, the four cells. And usually, these tables are drawn out as a kind of two by two grid. You can do it that way as well. And so we can see here's the, the preference that females had for website A is only a count of two, uh, so obviously very small. So that's, that's the kind of interesting change here. So we can run our chi-square test, as we've done before. Uh, and I'll take this opportunity to point out the some of you may be used to, in programming languages, the, the period or the dot being a scoping operator, um, kind of like the dollar sign is here, where we can reach inside a data table and, and specify, say, a, a column or a row. Um, the dot in R is just a character. It's like an underscore if you're used to uh, you know, C programming and, and its derivations. So if I double click, for example, on this term, it highlights the whole thing. It doesn't scope to just one of the the words or the other, because the period is just, in fact, uh, another character. That takes some people some getting used to if you're used to other programming languages. OK, so we'll go ahead and run the chi-square test. And here we see uh, a result that is statistically significant. 
Uh, and what that tells us, again, is just that there are some differences here. Uh, and we would need to uh, follow up with uh, a further analysis if we wanted to see exactly where those differences lay. Um, but we can tell that, in fact, there is a difference in, in, uh, in the preferences. Now, from the graphs, we can pretty easily tell that that difference is strong in large part because of the female's uh, lack of preference for website A. Now, another test that's catching on and becoming more popular is the G-test, which is like the chi-squared test. It is an asymptotic test as well, but it's uh, meant to be more accurate, and it's more of a, a kind of newer version of, of a similar thing. And we can access that test in this library, RVA, IDE, uh, M-E-M-O-I-R-E. A little bit hard to say there, but we can load that in. And uh, because we've done the work to assemble this PRFS variable, we can run a G-test directly. And we can see that it uh, produces a similar result to what we've seen before uh, with the two-sample chi-square test. Now, uh, there's also an exact test. Just like we used the binomial test in the past and the multinomial test, um, uh, but those only work for one sample. Uh, we can use Fisher's exact test, originally developed uh, for two by two um, tests like we have here, but actually can be generalized to kind of R by C, that is row by column uh, of any number, uh, becomes somewhat computationally intensive as, as those grow. But for most of the kinds of tests you would be looking at, if you have a, a small number of samples, um, then, uh, then this will work well. And the R version of this test is already generalized to beyond just two by two tables. So we can run Fisher's exact test as well and get uh, some output there showing uh, an exact p-value uh, here of 0 0.0018, uh, clearly below 0 0.05, uh, a confidence interval, and some other output there. So uh, all of those are alternatives to looking at uh, ways of analyzing a two-sample two test. Now, what happens again if we have three response categories? Well, um, here again, we can go back to our data with three response categories, press A, B, C, but encode the, um, the sex column as well, so we have the sex of the respondent. And so we'll load press A, B, C, sex, uh, and we'll uh, continue with our usual process of viewing that. And we can see here that we have uh, the preferences as before, but the sex column as well. Always a good idea to scroll to the bottom to make sure you have the number of rows that you expect, and we do with 60. We'll go ahead and um, recode our subject factor uh, as we've done and look at a, a brief summary here. We can see we have the 8, 21, and 31 uh, ca uh, counts for preferences of website A, B, and C, and the sex uh, 29 females, 31 males. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and do uh, a Pearson chi square test just like we've done before. So now this should be familiar to you. Uh, we'll create the cross tabulation. We'll take a quick view of that. And you can see it's a little bigger because we have three categories. So this would be a, a, a three by two contingency table or cross tabulation. And that's how it usually would be drawn out is as a three by two grid in this case. And then we can run the chi square test and see that in fact um, there is, we get a little warning here about the approximation and that's what I mentioned, it's not an exact test. Um, but uh, we can see, at least with this result, we do have a p-value of less than 0.05. Uh, so um, we can also run our g-test. We can see it's a 0.02, and then the exact test will give us the exact p-value for Fisher's exact test, uh, 0.03. So when all three tests are, are similar, it does give us some confidence about what we're seeing here. We can also do uh, these post hoc tests because recall that uh, a test over these values would only tell us uh, that there's some difference in the table. But we, if we want to look further, we can see where those differences lie. So we can run these post hoc binomial tests to see how much do the responses differ by uh, chance. And we can see for this that within we can test within males and within females, and we can see. Uh, uh, the preferences within males for A, B, and C website and within females for A, B, and C website against 
uh, all of, of their rows. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do those. And then as before, we'll do a post hoc adjustment of each of those p-values by the Holmes sequential Bonferroni procedure, uh, an adjustment for multiple comparisons. So if we take a look there, and we get this output, uh, this bottom row here tells us the, the three different p-values after adjustment. Uh, so males who preferred A uh, were not statistically significant from chance, uh, neither for B, but for, for website C they were. Uh, and we could go back and look at the counts to see that they preferred C uh, highly. You can do the same for females and see that they were statistically significantly different from chance in their lack of interest in website A, uh, but not for website B and not for website C. So that's where the significant differences lie. So let's go ahead and go back now to our table of analyses and see that throughout this process of analyzing user preferences, counting samples of their preferences and their sex, uh, we've actually uh, now done our third row here. We had more than one sample. We had, uh, in some cases, more than two response categories. And we've looked at an n-sample chi-square test, in this case a two-sample, uh, the g-test and Fisher's exact test. And that covers our tests of proportions. Uh, next, we'll be looking at analysis of variance, which will be more common uh, when we run experiments where we have subjects uh, give us just more than their preference. They actually uh, perform, do tasks, we measure those, and then we go about analyzing the results. And we'll come to that next.